Hare Krishna and we're back with the Nectar of Instruction by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So this is Shravanam Diaries Podcast and I am your host, Sulalita Devidasi. We're reading text 3, page number 25. Utsahan nishcaya dharya tat karma pravartanat Sangatyaga tsatovrite shadbir bhakti prasidyati Utsahat by enthusiasm, nishchayat by confidence, dharyat by patience, tat tat karma, various activities favorable for devotional service, pravartanat by performing, sangatyagat by giving up the association of non devotees, sata of the great previous acharyas. Vrite by following in the footsteps. Shadbi by these six. Bhakti devotional service. Prasidyati advances or becomes successful. Translation These are six principles favorable to the execution of pure devotional service. 1. Being enthusiastic. 2. Endeavoring with confidence. 3. Being patient. 4. Acting according to regulative principles. In brackets, such as Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, hearing, chanting, and remembering Krishna. 5. Abandoning the association of non devotees. And 6. Following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas. These six principles undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service. PURPORT Devotional service is not a matter of sentimental speculation or imaginative ecstasy. Its substance is practical activity. I love this, actually. The sum, the substance of pure devotional service is practical activity. Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.1.11 has defined devotional service as follows. Anyabilashita shunyam jnana karma dhyanavritam anukulyena krishnanu shilanam bhaktir uttama Quote Uttama Bhakti, or unalloyed devotion unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, involves the rendering of devotional service in a way that is favorable to the Lord. This devotional service should be free from any extraneous motive and devoid of fruitive karma, impersonal jnana and all other selfish desires. Bhakti is a sort of cultivation. As soon as we say cultivation, we must refer to activity. Cultivation of spirituality does not mean sitting down idly for meditation, as some pseudo-yogis teach. Such idle meditation may be good for those who have no information of devotional service. And for this reason, it is sometimes recommended as a way to check distracting materialistic activities. Meditation means stopping all nonsensical activities, at least for the time being. (laughs) But devotional service not only puts an end to all nonsensical, mundane activities, but also engages one in meaningful devotional activities. Shri Prahlada Maharaj recommends Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam The nine processes of devotional service are as follows. First, Hearing the name and glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Second, chanting His glories. Third, remembering the Lord. Fourth, serving the Lord's feet. 
fifth worshiping the deity sixth offering obeisances unto the lord seventh acting as the lord's servant eighth making friends with the lord and ninth surrendering oneself fully to the lord shravanam or hearing is the first step in acquiring transcendental knowledge one should not give oral reception to unauthorized persons but should approach the proper person as recommended in bhagavad gita 4.34 tadvidhi pranipateina pariprashne na sevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina statva darshinaha quote just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master inquire from him submissively and render service unto him the self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth Unquote. it is further recommended in the mundaka upanishad tadvigyanartham saguru meva bhigachet Quote, to understand that transcendental science that transcendental science one must approach a bona fide spiritual master thus this method of submissively receiving transcendental confidential knowledge is not merely based on mental speculation in this regard shri chaitanya mahaprabhu told rupa goswami Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagavan Jiva Guru Krishna Prasade Paya Bhakti Lata Bija Quote In the course of traversing the universal creation of Lord Brahma some fortunate soul may receive the seed of Bhakti Lata the creeper of devotional service This is all by the grace of Guru and Krishna Unquote, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 19.151 19.151 The material world is a place of confinement for the living entities who are by nature Ananda Maya, pleasure seeking. They actually want to be free from the confinement of this world of conditional happiness but not knowing the process of liberation they are bound to transmigrate from one species of life to another and from one planet to another in this way the living entities are wandering throughout the material universe when the good fortune by good fortune one comes in contact with a pure devotee and hears from him patiently one begins to follow the path of devotional service such an opportunity is offered to a person who is sincere the international society for krishna consciousness is giving such a chance to humanity at large if by fortune one takes advantage of this opportunity to engage in devotional service the path of liberation immediately opens one should accept this opportunity to return home back to godhead very enthusiastically without enthusiasm one cannot be successful even in the material world one has to be very enthusiastic in his particular field of activity in order to be successful a student businessman artist or anyone else who wants success in his line must be into the enthusiastic animal enthusiastic similarly one has to be very enthusiastic in devotional service enthusiasm means action but action for whom the answer is that one should always act for krishna krishnartha kila chesta bhakti rasamrita sindhu In all phases of life one has to perform devotional service under the direction of the spiritual master 
in order to attain perfection in bhakti yoga. It is not that one has to confine or narrow one's activities. Krishna is all-pervading. There is nothing independent of Krishna, as Krishna himself states in Bhagavad Gita. Wait a second. Hmm. I don't remember this paragraph. Everything else I can, like, clearly, like, it's, you know, like, I have this thing that, okay, I read this before, I read this before, this is, like, a reminder, very uh, nice, uh, uh, you know, like, repetition is the mother of learning, to, you know, memorizing this by heart, but this particular thing that Prabhupada really, he uh, emphasizes that in all phases of life, you should perform devotional service. And it's not that you have to confine or narrow one's activities. This is very, very, wow, relevant right now. Because it's been a topic actually in last year about, you know, some, some people by nature, they're doing 10 different things. <laughs> and some people by nature, they're more like into something one. And sometimes, I think in all areas of life, in material world also, in spiritual life also, you can find that fellow fellow friends or acquaintances will say something like, you know, to be a devotee means you have to actually narrow it down a little bit. <laughs> you know, just try to do something less. But we all have different natures, we all have different different conditionings and different... we're all different <laughs> individuals. So here I really, really... I'm really, really glad to read how Prabhupada actually says it's not that one has to confine or narrow one's activities, isn't it? This is where enthusiasm sometimes um, gets a bit disturbed because all of us are... like Prabhupada said, if, in order to be successful you need to be enthusiastic. So. I really find it a great a sign of friendship or, or like a sign of a well-wisher when they actually see that even though we're not pure, pure devotees yet, they see which areas of your enthusiasm, which areas are there that spark that enthusiasm in you. And they are able to either directly engaged in devotional service or indirectly connected to devotional service and in this way you, you remain enthusiastic. So, this, because Prabhupada says here, therefore, therefore nothing is independent of Krishna, as Krishna himself states in Bhagavad Gita 9.4. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagada vyakta murtina matstani sarva bhutani na chaham teshvavastita by me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them." Unquote. Under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, one has to make everything favorable for Krishna's service. For example, at present we are using a dictaphone. The materialist who invented this machine intended it for businessmen or writers of mundane subject matters. He certainly never thought of using the dictaphone in God's service. But we are using this dictaphone to write Krishna conscious literature. Of course, the manufacture of the dictaphone is wholly within the energy of Krishna. All the parts of the instrument, including the electronic functions, are made from different combinations and interactions of the five basic types of material energy, namely Bhumi, Jala, Agni, Vayu and Akash. So Bhumi is Earth, Jal is water, Agni is fire, Vayu is air and Akash is, is um, um, ether. The inventor used his brain to make this complicated machine, and his brain as well as the ingredients were supplied by Krishna. According to Krishna's statement, Matsthani Sarva Bhutani, everything is dependent on my energy. Thus the devotee can understand that since nothing is independent of Krishna's energy, 
everything should be dovetailed in his service. Endeavor executed with intelligence in Krishna consciousness is called utsaha or enthusiasm. So this is what's lacking sometimes, right? There's sometimes there's so much endeavor in Krishna consciousness, but you feel lack of enthusiasm. So I think that this is the missing point. In endeavor executed with intelligence. Have to be intelligent. In Krishna consciousness is called utsaha or enthusiasm. The devotees find the correct means by which everything can be utilized in the service of the Lord. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Muchate. The execution of devotional service is not a matter of idle meditation, but practical action in the foreground of spiritual life. Jai, this is beautiful, beautiful point. I love this point. We're going to stop here for today. And I just wanted to say a short anecdote. <clears throat> um, I think back in like five years ago, when I was studying at uh, Bhaktivedanta Academy at with Bhaktivedanta Purna Maharaj, we were studying Vedanta Sutra. And in Vedanta Sutra, there was like many, many sutras. Many, many. I just remember for many, many days we were discussing these sutras of um, Vedanta Sutra about Akash. And we were saying Akash is is Brahman, Brahman, Supreme Lord, so Supreme Lord, Akash, like the connection between Akash, Akash is Ether, Ether, Supreme Lord, Supreme Lord, Ether, and at some point everyone was like, okay, we got it, <laughs> Akash or Ether is Supreme Lord, Brahman, you can, you know, <clears throat> so, and, uh, and at one point it really struck me that, okay, Ether, Supreme Lord, Brahman, okay, and then I was joking with uh, with a classmate of mine, Mataji. Um, I forgot her name. Um, Jugula Priti Mataji. I was saying, okay, so now we know for sure that Wi-Fi is actually Krishna's energy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for me, it's like it was that connection. So ether, yeah, ether these days, Akash. It's um, it's a great source of connection for all of us in 2020 and 2021 so actually this connection is possible because it is krishna's energy yes so think about that <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in today and the link to this book is in the description and tomorrow we shall discuss one of the next most important um, items for success in bhakti yoga and everywhere else that's patience so let's have patience till tomorrow. <laughs> Hare Krishna.